Selling digital products on Etsy is all of the rage because lots of want to be entrepreneurs love the idea of a semi passive income. You create a digital product, load it into the Etsy listing, and as you get the cha chings, you can sell it over and over again without having to do any more work. It's literally the dream. But lots of sellers get started on Etsy and they don't get the results that they want and they're not quite sure why. And so today I want to dive in to the data of how you can find opportunities that are ripe because it's actually a total myth that Etsy is saturated. You just don't know how to do the research yet, and I am going to show you. So first, let's start with talking through some of the most popular digital products to sell and buy on Etsy. There is a lot of demand for all of them, and I'm going to give you the list, and then we're going to go into how you would do the research to find the real opportunities, and then the SEO, or the keywords that you would need to use on each listing so that it would actually get seen and sold. So here's our list. These are really, really popular, sold on Etsy all the time, lots of bestsellers. Calendars, digital calendars, fonts, planners, like digital planners, templates for sites like Canva or Cordial, and there are a whole bunch of others, SVG files, PNG files, Tumblr apps, digital invitations, patterns, digital art, principal wall art, coloring pages, Lightroom presets, ebooks, social media templates, wallpapers, stickers, resume templates, logos, printable labels, clip art, website templates. I could keep going, but you've got the idea. So here's what we're going to do. Let's go over to Etsy and I'm going to show you how I would do the research for one of these topics and how I would dive down into the best sellers so I could determine what I could create that would actually have a chance of selling. Let's go over to Etsy. Here on Etsy.com, we're gonna start by searching digital art and just see what comes up. I actually haven't searched this before, this term, so let's find out and we will see what we can find. So a couple things here. First of all, I am using a tool called Everbee. And when I got started on Etsy with um, physical products back in 2016, we did not have amazing tools like this that could give us so much data. We had to we had to make informed decisions a much more difficult way. And frankly, they weren't very informed. So we had to be prepared for a lot more trial and error. Tools like Everbee can take out a lot of the the waiting time and the guessing. It's still always like half science, half art, but it has completely changed my results and I get them much faster. So if you want to try every for free, you can do a little free trial with a link down in my bio. This is a tool that I use every single day and so do all of my students. So we're gonna see it over here on the left-hand menu and it's gonna, it's gonna have details where you can actually connect it to your shop um, and then you can analyze everything on Etsy. You can calculate prices. You can save listings to go back to. There's tons of functionality. Let me just show you. So if we go to everbee.io, um, you're going to just use the link that I gave you for the free um, for the free account that's down below. But what, you, what you're going to do is you'll get a Chrome extension. So when you use Everbee, you have to be on a computer and you have to use the Chrome browser, which at this point pretty much everyone is anyway. But then what you're going to do is install it in your browser, and that's how you're going to get this little panel here and the data that I'm about to show you. So digital, we've, we've searched for digital art. I'm going to also filter by bestseller. There's actually not a bestseller filter on Etsy anymore, but there's a workaround. So if you go to the filters and you click star seller, we'll also just click digital downloads because that's all we care about as well. And then you're going to click show results. So you'll see that the star seller filter is, um, is selected, and that's just something to show that a, a shop gives great customer service. But if you come up to the address bar and you remove the word star very carefully, make sure you leave the underscores on either side and type in the word best in its place and hit enter. This is a little tricky workaround where you can get the best seller filter hit um, clicked for your results. And this helps so much because then the results in our search uh, in our search feed here are only gonna be the ones that are flying off the shelves. We're only gonna look at the listings that are getting the results that we want. So as we scroll down now, even when we see ads, they will be best sellers. Um, so it's not just a random ad in front of you, it's actually something that fits the criteria of your search and also is a best seller. So for digital art, we're getting an idea here of what's selling really well. With my Everbee extension, I can see the data below of how many views and sales um, that the listing is getting and how old it is. Sometimes you'll see that it says um, zero sales, and that just means that there's like a tabulation error. Um, Everbee is connected to Etsy through an API connection. It's not always perfect. So if it has a bestseller badge, you can rest assured that that product is getting lots of sales. We're just not going to be able to see from Everbee ex what the kind of money that they're making. So this is a really interesting option here. It's a custom pet portrait. My guess is they're using AI. It looks like they're taking a photo of the pet and then using AI to create the portrait. 
Interesting observation for this one is that it, they only have 70, 72 reviews in this shop, which tells me it's a newer shop with a best uh, or with a um, yeah with a bestseller um, badge on their product. And that is a really good sign. That means that another new shop was able to break into this niche. You would be able to as well. I can see here they're getting 45 sales a month and uh, a ton of views. The listing is only five months old. But watch, I'm going to click the, the little B here. For my Chrome extension, and I'm going to get to learn a lot more. It's going to it's going to produce all this other content here. So, look at this. It's making $405 a month for this artist. Now, this is probably less passive, right? Because they're having to take the image and turn it into like take the picture of the dog and turn it into an image. Um, but you kind of get the idea. And then we can look at the shop details and see the shop itself is only 16 months old. They are pretty new. And if we scroll down, this is the piece de la résistance. La résistance. Oh, my, my French is a little rusty. And here's where I can see what tags they are using. So I can see um, the, the all of the SEO on this listing because not only can I look on Etsy at the listing title, but I can see what tags they're using and I can see how they're ranked. So if I, I like to click this little arrow next to the competition and it, and um, so that the lowest competition option is at the top and then going down to the like the most saturated. And I can see here how um, how these keywords rank. So this keyword would be a pretty good one with 175 searches per month and only 935 competing listings. Let's see what else we can find here. So this is going to be oh, we didn't even talk about this. So if you've ever used Procreate, which I love to use for like the coloring pages that I make um, to actually color on my iPad, like color the coloring pages, this is looks like it's actually a, a Procreate brush. That's a whole different product that you could create. This is great here. So this is an emerald green. This is so on trend. Modern reading woman art. So it is it is basically principal wall art that is extremely cute. Again, a newer shop with under 400 reviews and it's not actually showing me their monthly sales data. So I can't see how much they're making. Oh my gosh. This listing is, um, if it says one month, it's like one month or less. So it's so new that everybody doesn't even have the data from Etsy yet. The shop itself is a year old, but let's look at their tags because this is where it gets really interesting. Okay. So you see how this is a really good example because they've got some in the green, some in the yellow and some in the red. And so I can see here, artistic silhouette is one of the ways that this particular newer shop is ranking for this listing. Artistic silhouette is appropriate uh, a tag for the item. You don't want to use, just because something is like low competition, you don't want to use it. You want to make sure it's actually going to be, um, relevant to your listing or you're, you're, you're going to get downgraded in the Etsy algorithm. So 56 searches a month and only 4,700 competing listings. That might not seem amazing, but how many people are probably using, let's see, you can go, so you can actually scroll over and see even more like the keyword score. How many of them are using kitchen wall art or green wall art? And they're trying to compete with 1.6 million competing listings. Like, no, thank you. I, I'm thrilled there are so many searches every month, but that is really saturated. So what we want in our SEO, in our tags, is a mix of the green, the yellow, and the red. Here's another great one. This is a more established shop, but they are selling, um, cust so there's a little bit of custom work here where they've got the letter, the first letter of the child's name or person's name with then um, the name written below it. And then it has accompanying wildflower pictures. Out of curiosity, now actually you could also, if you, what did, if you wanted this to be more passive, you could sell this as a Canva template where the customer themselves actually goes in and edits. They can, they can choose from the, um, you can provide them an alphabet of the letter and then they can edit the name on there. This is making them $530 a month. I will say they're running a 40% off sale and Everbee cannot calculate like a sale being on and off. That's just, it's, that would be too complicated. So we need to make an adjustment here. We're going to take $530 times like what's left. So 0.6. So they're bringing in about $318 a month, which I'm sure they're not mad about because again, this is mostly passive. This is a great option here. This is kind of like a moody landscape print. Again, a newer shop. And man, they're getting some decent traffic to this um, with 2,900 views every month. It's making them, let's see, they're running a sale. So it's making them about $100 a month. But again, they've created it and they don't have to do anything after that. They get the cha-chings. Etsy just provides the file to the buyer and there is nothing else they have to do. It looks like Pemberley is a great word, 196 searches a month, only 3,000 competing listings. And in the mid-range, this is another great one, English countryside, 232 searches a month with 14,000 competing listings. Let's go ahead and try a different um, digital product just for fun. Let's do um, an invitation. 
Now, here's what you're gonna need to do for this research. Because here's the thing is, no matter what you wanna sell, you can do this exact same research when you have the Everbee extension and find out where the opportunities are. So it would be a mistake for me to go and just list that that digital print of the English countryside with really saturated keywords. I wanna be able to see how many searches and how many competing listings there are for each one so that I can make sure my listing has some low competition. I call them micro niche keywords, where there's maybe not the thousands of searches, but there's also not the competition and it's a way for me to squeak into the marketplace and beat the saturation. Okay, so first we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna filter by bestseller. We're also gonna filter by digital. So let's do our quick little work around here. Oh my, there we go. Okay, let's see. I love looking for the new shops, the one with under five, like under a thousand or under 500 um, reviews because it tells me there's an opportunity here. They have a bestseller badge and they're a newer shop or a slower growing shop. There are so many of them here, look at this. So this is really cute, uh, kind of a 90s theme, let's party digital invite. Only 312 reviews so far and they're not running an ad. So let's see what they're making monthly with this. This would be sold as a Canva template so that the person buying it, they're gonna get a link to the template. What you would do is you would, you when you're in Canva, you can create a template link and then you put the template link onto a PDF with the instructions for the buyer. And the PDF is what you actually put on the Etsy listing to be delivered to the customer. Um, and that is how you can deliver them a link. Whether you're selling a bundle and you need to put them all in Google Drive, you can sell, put the link to the Google Drive folder on the PDF, or in this case, a template. This is making them $391 a month. It's only six months old. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we have some really interesting, cute retro B-Day is a great keyword. Smiley face invite. Actually, you wanna not do that because smiley, um, like this, is a trademarked image and you can get into some legal trouble if you use the smiley face. So it's important to pay attention to that. I would not use that one. However, Preppy invitation is a great keyword to break into this market if you wanted to make any, I mean, preppy could cover so many different things, but it's usually referring to the 90s. 165 searches a month with only 7,800 competing listings. Groovy invitation is another good one. So again, you're gonna sprinkle through your, um, you want your SEO and your tags to be some low competition, like in the green, some medium competition in the yellow, and then one or two, three max that are more saturated. And what will happen is you will rank in the Etsy algorithm, you'll start getting views for the lower competition keywords, the micro niches. And as you are seen and people are clicking on clicking on your listing, they are favoriting your listing, they are buying your listing, Etsy's algorithm says, oh, people like this when they click on it. Let's go ahead and kick it into a higher class of search. So now all of a sudden you're showing up for retro invitation, which has more searches and more competition, but you're higher in the algorithm. And then when you perform well there with clicks, favorites, purchases, that's when you start showing up on the first couple pages of retro birthday, which would be very saturated, but now you have gamed the system, you've gamed the algorithm, and now you're showing up really in the top of those search results. If you're a totally new creator and you don't know how to create digital products, I've got you. I actually got a couple of workshops that can help teach you how to use AI to create incredible images, whether you want to sell landscape portraits or you want to sell PNGs and Tumblr wraps with amazing little hand-drawn watercolor graphics that come out of AI. I have a couple of workshops available. You can look down in, this, in the description and there's one that is extremely popular. It's an AI PNG and Tumblr rep workshop. I show you how to find more of this, how to find what is in demand that you can compete for, how to use mid-journey to design incredible designs. Part of the science and art of that is the prompt that you give it. I'm giving you a ton of prompts and I'm teaching you how to use them and how to make tweaks, how to turn it into a file that you can sell on Etsy, how to write the SEO for your listing. And I'm also providing my own personal descriptions that I use on my digital products to help make sure that all of my customers' questions are answered. You're getting lots of templates, lots of content. If you have a curiosity about coloring pages, I do have a coloring page workshop coming up. So make sure you grab that and join me for that down in the, in the description is below. In the meantime, I hope that you try Everbee. Make sure you get that link and get the um, get the free trial so that you can play with it and look at this data yourself. I highly recommend you have that in your tool chest because it has made me thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and saved me hundreds of hours of time with the research that it provides. I'm so glad we got to hang out today. I'm really excited for your digital product journey. Hit me up on the How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy podcast every Thursday and feel free to explore the other resources. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.